Eileen, thank you. So as the Gateway Hotel prepares to close its doors, some residents are now looking for a place to live. Yeah, KFOX 14 News at 9's Vanya Castillo set out to see how the city's preparing for some of these changes. Well, some of the people I spoke with at the Gateway Hotel told me that they've already paid their rent for the month and have been told by the owner that they will not be getting a refund. And many of those people say that they lived on a fixed income and the only option they see is living on the street. Yeah. It's a race against time in the heart of downtown El Paso. So right here, the gate right yeah. now. Right, so that's it right here. Yeah, and so you guys got this from the county attorney? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so the deadline's actually on Thursday at 10 a.m. Okay. In less than 24 hours, the Gateway Hotel will close its doors after being served an injunction by the county for running without a permit for years and allegations of criminal activities within the walls of the hotel. Of course, all because of the Salvadorians start, all of us, they uh, punish all of us. It was affordable housing in the middle of downtown, you know, and, and it just went, went to pot, you know, so to speak. Leaving residents like Louis Garcielli, who have lived at the Gateway Hotel for years, scrambling to find a place to call home. Do you know what you're going to do? Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm on a fixed income. I receive a, a retirement and I'm um, just kind of at odds right now. Mm -hmm. Kind of scared. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to end up on the street. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty unfortunate, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you feel like that's the reality of what can happen? Um, yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. I, I really don't I end up in a shelter, I, you know, but we'll see what happens. You know, I just have to have faith that I'll be all right. For their part, the county attorney's office is partnering with the El Paso Coalition for the Homeless. My next paycheck, I'll be able to afford uh, some housing. Yeah. But right now, there's no reimbursements, no refunds. These people are elderly, they are handicapped, and there are families, and that's who we're trying to reach out to first. Manuel Nevarez also called the hotel home. He was living off his social security check and says he'll probably end up living on the street, but his greatest concern is in himself. You were saying that you were like concerned for some of the children? The children. How come? Because uh, it might take a day or two to get a, to get a, a room or something in the house. It's, it's bad when you have it in the streets. Anything can happen. Something Canada says is almost inevitable. The need is so great that um, it's, it's becoming very difficult to find enough capacity. Well, there have been 639 calls to the police department about the Gateway Hotel in the last two years. I reached out to the city to see what kind of safety measures are being talked about to keep people already living in local shelters safe as well as the community. We were told by a city spokesperson that they are communicating with the Opportunity Center and Project Amistad. However, for specific safety measures, we would need to reach out to them directly. When I asked about how the police department is preparing for the displacement of such a large group of people, I was told to reach out to the police department. Now, we have not heard back from them. Reporting from the studio, I'm Vanna Castillo.